It's a big day, Helldivers, as Arrowhead has dropped a series of changes into the game in the form of another patch. And there are some monumental changes here. I'm a little late posting this video because I wanted to go into the game and test this all out for myself. And I can tell you the game plays very different than before. And I even found something that wasn't listed here in the notes. Plus, incoming transmission from Helldivers HQ, we've got a brand new major order to take on. Welcome to the channel, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I knew this week would be thick with Helldivers news, and we've got a ton to sift through today. Thanks again for your awesome support for my uploads. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts, and let's get into all of the news from Helldivers. Okay, there's going to be a lot here today, so make use of those video chapters if you want to repeat certain sections. First things first, the last major order rewards rolled out this morning, as when I logged in, I received my 50 medals, so be on the lookout for those. Also, today's daily order is to kill 15 Devastators, so you're going to need to take on Automaton missions, and the Devastators are the bots with the half circle ring kind of over their heads, and they look like this. So drop 15 of these enemies and collect your 15 medals. Now onto the breaking news, and as I was preparing to upload this video, Arrowhead decided to hit us with the next major order as we just got an incoming transmission from Super Earth. This time, we're going to be ordered to the Umlaut sector to take on the Terminids, as the Seif engineers have been constructing the TCS or Terminid control system, but before they could activate it, the Terminids swarmed those planets, and the Helldivers are now being sent in to finish the job and turn on the TCS. Once we activate the TCS on each planet, it will inoculate the planet, quarantining the bugs permanently. Pretty cool stuff, right? And I absolutely love the lore and setups for these major orders. Anyways, we're going to be looking at the standard seven days to knock out this campaign with the timer already ticking away. And in total, we're going to be spread across four planets to achieve victory. Arata Prime, Fenrir 3, Meridia, and Turing with each showing a TCS status bar when you highlight each planet. So knock out those missions on each planet, collect the medals, and contribute to the TCS installation progress bar, and that major order will be ours. Next up is what I had originally planned this Helldivers breakdown around as we got that new patch. Now update 1.000.102 hit the live game this morning. And I think it was something like 64 megs in size, so very small in terms of downloads. And this one is the hotfix that Arrowhead spoke about last week, aimed at addressing things like enemy spawn spikes, elites stacking, well, sort of, more of that in a moment, and also what's at the heart of this patch, chargers. Now, as I said earlier, I've gone into the game post-patch and I grabbed a bunch of footage and tested out different stratagems and there are some massive changes here. But first, here's what the studio had to say about today's patch. The amount of heavily armored targets that spawn on higher difficulties, especially for Terminids, have been a big discussion point online and internally. The intent is for groups to have to bring some form of anti-tank capability, but not to the degree previously needed. To that end, we have reduced the spawn rates of Chargers and Bile Titans on difficulties 7 and up. In addition, we have reduced the risk of spawn spikes of Chargers and Bile Titans. Please note that we have changed the distribution of enemy types, not reduced difficulty. Expect other enemy types to appear in greater numbers instead. Now we've talked about this already and I've discussed this topic in several previous Helldivers uploads, but the issue has always been how many elites would spawn in on a bug breach because you would just get layer upon layer of chargers and spewers and titans all coming out of the ground at once and squads were quickly overrun. Now I managed to record this footage just a few minutes ago and for a level 7 suicide mission it felt pretty challenging but not insanely overwhelming. Chargers and Titans were still spawning in, but not in the numbers they used to. And I do want you to remember that these changes are listed and aimed at 7s, 8s, and 9s. Now, since the Charger and Titan spawns, and basically those spawn spikes have all now been reduced, 
that means you're going to be seeing a ton more of the medium and light enemy types. It looks like the scavengers, warriors, hunters, stalkers, and brood commanders have all had their spawn rates pushed up quite a bit. So when those bug breaches happen, you just see these things pouring out of the spawn points. Now where it starts to get a bit mental is with those bile spewer spawns. As they used to spawn and ride on top of each other prior to today, but what we were seeing from some of these breaches had us all commenting that they all seem to have had their spawn rates just jacked up. At one point on this emergency evacuation mission on, again, suicide difficulty, these spewers opened a breach right next to the base, and I lost track of how many of these things spawned in, but it was well into the double digits, and there were so many of them overlapping that you couldn't tell if you had killed them or not. As you log in today and start trying out these level 7s, 8s, and 9s, let me know if you see any difference in how many bile spewers you see in your missions. Again, like I said, the changes to the Chargers and Titans, you're just going to immediately recognize. Just make sure you bring in something to handle all of those light and medium enemy spawns as you will quickly run out of primary ammo. And this is where something like a Guard Dog Rover or two or three or four might actually come in handy. But now on to the massive change to Chargers. And to start with, here again is what the studio had to say about our favorite Terminated enemy type. We are humbled by the community's ability to find things like Charger's leg meta in our game. However, spending your heavy anti-tank weapons on legs instead of the obvious weak point seems counter to expectation. We are not changing anything regarding the Charger's legs. We are, however, lowering the health of the Charger's head. It should now be a point where a well-placed shot from a recoilless rifle or EAT-17 instantly kills a charger. More on this in a second. Together with the unfortunately undocumented change of last patch that increased the armor penetration ability of less well-placed shots for EAT-17s and recoilless rifle shots, chargers should now be easier to handle by well-equipped groups. Since that last patch, which included the changes to the railgun, Helldivers have been experimenting with other support weapons like the flamethrower and laser cannon, and both have shown to be pretty effective at dealing with chargers. But now, with the latest changes, I'm going to tell you that the EAT-17s are the new hotness. Trust me. And I did test them out this morning before recording, so I got in a bit of time with the railgun, which in unsafe mode and shooting directly at a charger's head will now drop them in five-ish shots. And by the way, I didn't try out the legs with the railgun. Sorry for that. But the EAT-17s are the way to go. As the notes say, we should be able to one-shot kill a charger with a well-placed shot. And I found that this was just aiming directly at the charger's head. And the best part was that this strategy leads to consistent charger kills. Just let them run directly at you, plunk them in the head with the EAT, and they are finished. This is a huge change to the game when compared to some of those other support weapons. Also, the EAT only has a 70 second cooldown after you've upgraded your drop ship, and each drop comes with two of these. I was waiting until I saw a charger, calling it in, just obliterating the charger in one shot, and then grabbing the spare launcher as we made our way to the next objective. Seriously, I don't think I can express enough how much the charger mechanics and which weapons are effective against this enemy type have now been altered in the live game. Further into the patch notes, they explain that they have now removed the electronic countermeasure operation modifier, and this was the one that would scramble your stratagem call-ins and make them random. It is planned that this modifier will be reworked and introduced back into the game in the future. Also in this patch were three vague fixes concerning HUD, UI, and subtitle mismatches, along with various crash fixes. Now onto the hidden change, not listed here, and thank God I did some testing this morning. This is also a massive change to the live game, and it has to do with those vaunted meteor showers. You can actually see the impact zones now. Crazy. I know, right? There is this bright light on the ground that starts with a larger radius, and as the meteor approaches impact, it will narrow down to a smaller point before actually hitting the planet. Okay, so TLDR, it's not mentioned anywhere here in these notes, but it's now in the live game, and it makes it a hell of a lot easier to see these meteor showers, and more importantly, to avoid those impact zones. 
All right, this is probably a great place to press pause for today because you know we've got a new daily order now, a new major order, and a bunch of new spawn mechanics to take on. And seriously, give that EAT a try. You're gonna love it versus chargers. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Check in the video description for links to all my socials. Also, while you are there, click on the open invite link to my official Discord server where we have a quickly growing Helldivers community. There are channels there for general discussions, tips and tricks, and the popular LFG channel for finding like-minded Helldivers. And of course, you are welcome to use our free voice channels to activate those mics and start delivering democracy. Shout out to the now almost 208,000 of you that have stuck with me. Each day the channel grows and just keeps rocketing upwards and I am so grateful to all of you. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer signing off. <laughs>